There it is, the heart. Peace and love to you all. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Five Animal Frolic series on Holy Awakening. My name is Nathan Faust, uh, Qigong instructor, meditation instructor, facilitator, and neuro-linguistic programming uh, professional. So, welcome. I guess ultimately mind, body, medicine practitioner. That's what I usually say. So, thank you guys for joining today. Today is going to be a rather wonderful peachy time. I certainly hope you guys have been enjoying this series thus far. As you may know, we've just finished the sitting meditation sequence, and now we're going on to the third and and potentially final stage of the uh, practice of the tiger. Usually it goes through the movement or the form, the sitting meditation, the standing meditation, and then the shaking practices. So there is a shaking practice in the tiger that will be released. Uh, after the standing meditation sequence. Um, there are three or four main stances in the tiger. I just kind of loosely demonstrated them right there. I'll demonstrate them a little bit better in just a few minutes. That's just to get my own body kind of used to it and warm up. So there's basically about four of them. Two down here, what we call the lower gate. And then one up here towards the middle gate. You can do various forms in the middle gate. And then we have it up here in the, of the upper gate. Now many of you are asking, what is he talking about? There's gates. Yes, there are three main gates in the body when you're doing Qigong. This is also evident in uh, Wing Chun practice as well. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to demonstrate for you guys and show you the three gates. And then we'll talk a little bit about the standing postures and what is the, what is the philosophy behind the standing postures. And why should you do them? And then we'll start demonstrating them. All right, first things first. I'm going to come close to the camera here. So, three gates. The first gate, number one gate, is right here, which is basically your stomach all the way down here to your groin area. So, stomach and groin. That's your first gate, right here. You can think of it as gates or dantians as well. There's three dantians, which is the first dantian, the second dantian, and then the third dantian as well, which is between your eyes. The first dantian or the first gate or the first dantian is three finger widths below your belly button. Next is chest level right here. That's your uh, second dantian. And the third is right between your eyes, right there. That's the same thing with the gates. The gates are a little bit broader. So it's this whole area here. And it's this whole area here. And then it's this whole area up here with the face. Those are the three gates. And the practice pretty much works on three, on these three levels here. The practice works here, and then works the chest, and then works the head or clears the mind. Those, that's basically the three gates. That's the simple way of speaking about it. 
Now, the philosophy uh, behind the standing practices of the tiger. Okay, the sitting postures, if you remember them, if not, I highly recommend that you go back and watch that video. Uh, the seated meditation, tiger seated meditation, great to boost confidence, yeah. That's what, the, that's what the tiger is all about, by the way. It's about boosting your confidence and getting what I want done. And that's really necessary in this time period, I feel. But the standing meditation sequence is the external part of the tiger. The seated meditation is the internal part of the tiger. There's yin and yang of all the animals. The tiger being the most expressive of them, meaning he has a little more yang energy than the rest of them. But this standing meditation, or should I say the seated meditation, takes on the yin quality of the tiger. Whereas the standing meditation takes on the external, more yang quality of the tiger. In so doing, the seated meditation works upon more energy work. If you remember, we held this area right here, right? We were kind of on our liver a bit, our liver energy a little bit. Boosted that up while we're sitting. And that's what you'll find throughout the entire animals. The entire animal sequence of sitting, like for example, the deer will have us work on our kidneys, which is coming up, so stay tuned. And the bear will have us working on our stomachs. The, uh, the monkey will work on our heart. And the crane will work on our lungs and so on and so forth. So there's going to be a lot of expansive breathing practices with the crane. Prolonged breathing sequences. In fact, during the crane, you'll learn the 7-Eleven breathing pattern. But anyway, on with the tiger. So that's the yin phase. There's also external phases. I mean, that's where the standing practices come in. And the standing external of the tiger is the joints. That's the joints. So we'll be working a lot of the tendons in the hands and fingers. Uh, there's so much that you can do with this. The first movement is basically placing your hands on the counter. That's what I like to call it. The only difference, because there's a lot of Qigong sequences that have this. The only difference is you got your tiger claws activated. Like that. That's the entire difference. My hands are a little bit below my belly button, okay? So the hands are going to be placing flat down as if you're resting on a table. Look at this chair over here. I'd like to introduce you to my office chair. Wee. So it's basically like I'm just putting my hands down resting on this. All right or any kind of table will do as well. Resting. There's so many Qigong sequences that have this same movement. And what it does, the health benefits of this, is it works on your wrists. Activating the tiger claws will help you with your fingers. This, according to Chinese medicine, will help with carpal tunnel, will also help with um, arthritis in the hands, any kind of thing wrong with your joints. According to traditional Chinese medicine, 
the tiger will help with that. And that's the philosophy of it. The philosophy of the tiger helps with bones, joints, and coldness, you might think, coldness of your joints. This is why it's the first animal. Because it awakens your body. It frees your body. So say you get up in the morning and your body is kind of stiff. What do you do? You do the tiger because the tiger initiates. It gets the ball going. It gets you ready for the day. So that's the first movement is right here. On the placing hands on the kitchen counter. That's what I like to call it. Okay? So let's run through that movement. How do we begin? Well, at the end of your sitting postures, what you do is you get up from your chair and you take your chair and scoot it back. Kind of like how I did right there. So now it's time to begin your standing postures training. Your feet are together. Toes are going to be pointing straight ahead. Remember, no funky business. And you're going to basically be shifting your weight as if you're picking up a package and setting it down. Picking up the weight from your left leg and your left foot so there's nothing there. As you can see, I can just lift this puppy up with hardly any resistance. Then I step out, around shoulder width. Doesn't have to be exact, there's no exact. Just fade that out of your mind. This is easy in that regard. And then we're gonna, guess what? Breathing in, we're going to sink the chi. I like to call this rainfall, or rain. Because that's the kind of sensation I get from this, is rain. Good. And I do that three times. So you do that three times before we begin. Exhale. And then we press our hands down. Before I go and continue, are you following along? Are you getting up from your chair and following along and practicing the tiger? Remember, those who practice the tiger the tiger will give them a bountiful gift of longevity and strength and confidence. So let's try that again. We do rain. Say it with me. Rain. Fall down. Rain. Fall down. Oh. Rain and then falls down, good. Now, you're already in perfect position to put your hands on the countertop, on the kitchen counter. Now, the level, my hands are below my belly button. The fingertips are pointing at each other. I'll come closer so you can see because we have just wonderful technology here. See? Fingertips pointing at each other. Now, it's not down here, down by my waist. This is my waist area, just so you know. This is my waist. This here is my belly button, right there. So I'm right here. I'm breathing in. I'm going to be holding this posture for about five minutes. That way, I can supposedly, of course, send the chi. We believe in chi on this channel. We're sending the chi through the joints, through the arms, and most importantly, we're extending this. So, 
really, the chi is probably not going to go through here. Because I've learned that from uh, my specific lineage of Tai Chi, from uh, uh, the Wang Yong Chun lineage of Tai Chi, and the Wei Shirin as well. That's why when they do their brush knee, their hand is kind of like this and not flexed. But that's not really what we're after here. We're after that flexion. Because that flexion boosts um, strength. It also boosts flexibility. That's the word I'm looking for, flexibility within that joint. So that it prevents any kind of arthritic problems that will happen with the uh, joints and the wrists and the knuckles, the fingers of your hand. So, countertop. You stand like this for about five minutes. Yeah. What is the breathing? That's the basic movement of this. What is the breathing pattern? The basic breathing pattern is the abdominal breathing. Well, I just simply call it gut breathing, <laughs> stomach breathing. And we are activating the water element breathing. So it's the water element, meaning we're going to be breathing in and out through our nose, not out through our mouth. We can do that for just physical relaxation as we do the rain exercise. So when we do the rain exercise, it's okay to do the <sighs> We don't do it so loudly that it wakes everybody up in the morning. Inhale. Oh, rain coming down. Inhale. Exhale. Oh. In fact, that sound is going to be used more later on in the monkey. But for now, let's just disregard it and let's just focus on our water breathing in the kitchen countertop, the hands on the countertop. Now, roll up my sleeves here and get to work. You see, the wrist is flexed. The fingertips are pointing at each other. And that's all there is to this exercise. As you can see, if I back up a little more, my armpits are away from the body. And it's so good because this jacket here kind of outlines my figure pretty well so that you can see. You can stick a hot bun in there, or you can stick an egg in there, and it won't crack. My hands are pushing down and flexed. Shoulders down, relaxed. Not shrugging, just down and relaxed. Neck, nice, even, and relaxed. All right, that's the physical movement of it. Pretty simple, right? And you just hold this posture for five minutes. All right, what is your mind up to? So there's a huge debate on people who practice Tai Chi and people who practice Qigong. Uh, they often say, is Tai Chi Chen or is Qigong actually meditation? Some would say, no, it's not because you're still thinking. You're not thinking about something. And people say, that it is because, and they give their reasons for it. But what I want to say is this. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what side of the bench you are on. Just follow these exercises and keep breathing right. You're thinking about one thing in this posture. You're thinking about pushing down on something. Let me bring the chair in. There we go. 
go. The chair. Okay, so I'm visualizing. Uh, I'm pushing. That's what I want to visualize. I'm pushing on the chair. Yeah. Right? That's what your mind is going to tell your body. Now, the trick is, are you going to tense up? Are you really going to tense up as you press down? I hope not, because that would defeat the purpose. That's the trick of this exercise. You're visualizing yourself pushing down on someone. You're visualizing pushing down on something or someone when in actuality you have no tension. And that's the same with every one of these coming exercises of the tiger. You're visualizing yourself pushing, but you're not. Don't use force. Just use visualization and meditation. And like I said before, that's actually pretty tricky. So give yourself some time just, just to visualize it. Like, for example, I'm visualizing, I'm pushing on the table, and I'm trying to push up, kind of like a push-up. Push my body up. Or pushing down someone. And in fact, this is an actual application you can use in fighting too. As someone tries to come forward and tries to take out your legs, if you're fast enough, you can backstep and then push them down. This step, this form right here is also known as log. The log in the river. And that's in Bagua. The log that floats in the river. I like that name better, but for this video, I just say hands on the countertop because people can visualize that so much better. Hands on the countertop, hands on the table. This is the first exercise I give my students in person. And the requirement is to stand for five minutes. Now. A lot of people can't stand standing for five, three or five minutes. The reason being is we grow up, especially us Westerners, because we grow up having our minds always playing something, always thinking about something. In actuality, you should quit thinking and start going in. I'm not thinking about hardly anything. I'm trying to fade all of the bills, all of our cares out for now, and or all the family affairs. I gotta take my daughter, you know, to the baseball game later on, and so on and so forth. Forget all that stuff and focus on just breathing in and out through the stomach and visualize yourself pushing down. That is how you truly build chi. And that is how the tiger helps one build chi. Okay, so that's the first movement of the standing practice. Um, I suggest that you practice this every single morning. That's my encouragement. I'm not going to force you. There is no force here on this channel. All, every video is just us encouraging you. This is just us encouraging you and this is what we think that would, you would benefit from. This is no way, shape, and form me telling you what to do. That is wrong in and of itself. Instead, this is my encouragement. So let's take it from the top. Let's take it from the top. Inhale, breathe in. Remember, rain. 
Rainfall. <sighs> you can go ahead and use your fire breathing for the rainfall. Fire breathing, if you do not know that breathing, then I refer you to the last video. <sighs> Inhale, breathe in. <sighs> Good. After that, you step out and then you regain your position. Now, knees and legs. My toes pointing straight ahead, slight bend in the, in the legs, okay? Not straight, just a slight bend. And never bend beyond your comfort zone. A lot of problems happen there. So instead, just a slight bend. In your legs. Just a little give. As you can see, I'm kind of bouncing a little bit. That's what you want. And you hold this posture. It starts with five minutes. And if you can do five minutes, up it to 10 minutes. Do 10 minutes, you can up it to 20 minutes so on and so forth. Every one of these standing practices can be up to an hour long, if that's what you want. I recommend it just spent five minutes on each of these standing postures, and that will give you great results. Okay, that's number one. Uh, next video, we're going to be giving you the next standing posture. Work on this one. Work on the countertop. Hands on the countertop or a log, whatever you want to call it, for about a day or two before you move on to the next form. Thank you so much. I hope you guys love this video. This video hopefully was a little shorter than the last one and um, so that you can digest it a little bit better. So thank you. I hope you guys have a marvelous, wonderful day. Many blessings. And remember, stay in your heart center. Stay in your heart. Believe in peace and love and happiness. Thank you.